Good morning. My name is Annie Ogden, and I'm this year's John Hay Society President. All of us in John Hay would like to welcome our visiting students and their families to our chapel service. We meet here in the chapel as a community twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday, to listen to our peers, our teachers, and occasionally invited guests speak about something meaningful to them. The students you saw standing by the pews today are members of the John Hay Society, a student group that assists with chapel services. John Hay members participate in community service projects, organize speakers for the program, and sponsor a dance marathon that raises money for the Westminster Crossroads Learning Program in Hartford. Our weekly chapel becomes a time to pause and reflect in our busy days here at school. Perhaps someday, we may be listening to one of you up here, giving your own chapel talk. Today, we are going to hear from Elizabeth Casey, who has definitely never tried out for chamber choir. <laughs> Please stand and sing verses 1 and 3 of the hymn found on page 376. <laughs> video, and it is now a family joke that I cannot tell my right from my left. 
The point is, no matter how bad I was at gymnastics and ballet, I loved both and no one could take that away from me. Another thing I've learned from being a bad singer is that you can't take yourself too seriously. There have been many instances in my life where I've embarrassed myself so much, the only thing I can do to make it better is to laugh. One rainy day of my freshman year at Westminster, I was walking back into Armour after lunch. It was towards the end of the lunch block, so there were a lot of seniors in the lounge who at this moment happened to be looking down into the middle of the atrium. As I reached down to pick up my backpack, I fell flat on my back due to my wet rain boots and the wet floor. Every senior saw me, or at least that's how it felt. There I was, freshman me, sitting on the armor floor, completely and utterly embarrassed. But I started laughing, which consequently reassured them I was in fact okay and allowed them to laugh too. This moment made me realize that even though I was definitely embarrassed, it was funny and my life wasn't going to end just because I fell down in front of a bunch of seniors. The next lesson I've learned is to accept that you will not be good at everything, but don't be afraid to take chances. Sometimes, it's better to take a risk and do something you don't think you'll be any good at. For me, that risk was running cross country. I have played soccer my whole life. My sisters played, my mom was the ideal soccer mom, running carpools and providing sidestep oranges for halftime. And I played on the club team for four years leading up to high school. When I got to Westie, I made the JV soccer team and played for two years. But my freshman year, I ran the Martlet Mush, an all-school cross-country invitational hosted by the cross-country team. To my surprise, I finished as the first student girl. Ms. Devaney, the assistant head of school, history teacher, and always the best runner, beat me, but I also happened to break the freshman goal record. I never really knew that I was a decent runner until Ms. Devaney, Mr. DeCanter, and Ms. Heckman attempted to get me to join the cross-country team after that first run with Mush. I was surprised and also a little bit encouraged that they had asked, but I kept saying no because I wanted to continue with soccer until this past summer. In June, along with my sister Phoebe, I ran in the Fairfield Half Marathon. By the last mile, I was practically dead. Out of breath, every bone in my body aching, my mind thinking about how I should have trained even for just a couple more weeks, I crossed the finish line in an hour and 57 minutes. And even though I assumed I was running with Phoebe, she seemed to wander in about an hour after me. It was at this point that I decided if I could run 13.1 miles in under two hours, I can probably run 3.1 miles in a cross country meet. Little did I know, being a part of the cross country team also consisted of one hour runs on Mondays, Tuesday, Tuesday, which is Mr. DeCanter's idea of fun, sprints around the track or sprints up a long, daunting hill, aqua jogging on Wednesdays, tempo runs on Thursdays, light jogs on Fridays, and long, brutal meets on Saturdays. To be honest, one of the reasons why I was apprehensive about joining the team was because I was afraid I wouldn't be fast enough or be able to run for long enough. But I took the chance and ended up having one of my favorite fall seasons. I made new friends, got better at running, learned to push through something when it starts to get tough, and never did I think I'd be co-captain of the cross-country team my sixth form year. I guess sometimes you need to be open to trying new things, even if you don't think you're going to be successful at them. Now, getting back to my singing. I've learned from being vocally challenged that nothing shows true friendship like being willing to listen to me sing. As my friends know quite well, I like to sing anytime, anywhere, to any song. This applies to walking to class, eating in the dining hall, walking back from class, and especially in the dorm. There have been countless times when my friends and I will all be in a room together, and someone will start to play music. So naturally, I start singing which is immediately followed by, Liz, stop singing. Seriously, shut up. <laughs> I would like to formally apologize to my friend, or really to anyone who's had the pleasure of being in the same room as me while I am singing. But, because they put up with it, I know they truly are my best friends. And finally, my last point is that nothing makes car rides more fun than a sing-along with the windows open. 
Every summer, my sisters and I are all home together, and especially in the summer, we go on late night drives to get ice cream. It's always the same. Hannah, the oldest sister, driving. Phoebe, my twin sister, in the passenger seat, and me in the back. Hannah is in charge of saying what songs we played, classic bossy older sister. And Phoebe is in charge of making sure they get played. And then there's me just enjoying the ride. If you've ever been in a car with the three of us, you know it's awful. And I'm not saying, oh, this really isn't good singing. I'm saying it's cover your ears, maybe start crying, try to open the door to roll out of the car even if we're on the highway type singing. Our song choices range from Coldplay and One Republic to Hannah Montana, Taylor Swift, and of course, Justin Bieber. These car rides have taught me that no matter what mood I'm in, ice cream is always the call. And nothing makes me happier than belting out a really bad song with my sisters. So, what has being chronically tone deaf taught me? Never to let anyone tell you not to do something because you're not good at it. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't be afraid to take chances. Your best friends will forgive you for being bad at something if it makes you happy. And the only thing that makes ice cream better is singing Miley Cyrus at the top of your lungs with the windows down. Thank you.